Hello, everybody, and welcome to the vloggy thing. So, when I was young, I was taught a trick for multiplication tables. You know, way back in the day, back when I was in elementary school, we were learning the multiplication tables, and I learned a trick for the nines multiplication tables. What you do is you take your fingers, like this, so all ten fingers out, and you count whatever number you want to multiply by nine. So if I want to multiply by, say, 5, I count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we count up all of the fingers that are before the finger that's down and all of the fingers that are after the finger that's down. And those are the two digits that make up the number that we're trying to get to. So 5 times 9 would be 45. And that works with any number up to 10, obviously. So 1 times 9 would be 9, 10 times 9 would be 9 and 0, so 9D, and it works, and it works fairly good. So really quick, kind of 9's multiplication table, really easy. Well, you can extend that a little bit and figure out how to easily divide by 9 as well. So because you can do this trick, so because any number times 9, any single digit number times 9 ends up with this pattern, well, we know that if we take a number, add its digits together, and if those digits add up to 9, then that number is divisible by 9. Think 72. So 7 plus 2 equals 9, so we know 72 is divisible by 9. And because we have this trick, so we go... Um, yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how to do this while I'm saying it at the same time. So we know 72 is divisible by 9, and we know that to get 7 on this side of the finger, we have to have one more. All we have to do is take the first digit, add 1, and we know what number we're looking for. So 72 divided by 9 would be 8, because 7 plus 1 equals 8. And that works for any number divisible by 9 up to 90. Obviously, 99, which we know is divisible in my 9, does not follow this rule because you add the two numbers together. Obviously, they're not divisible by 9, or they're not 9. They're divisible by 9. So we can extend this rule. So instead of saying that if we take the numbers, put them together, they must equal 9 for the number to be divisible by 9. We can say that if we add the two digits together and it's divisible by 9, then the number itself, the original number, is also divisible by 9. So 99 would be 9 plus 9 and then 18. 18 is divisible by 9, so 99 would be divisible by 9. Okay. Well, we can extend that to three digits numbers as well. 108 is divisible by 9. Specifically, it's literally the next one up, so it's 12. Uh, 99 is 9 times 11. 108 would be 9 times 12. Well, 8, 0, 1, so 8, 1, 9. Well, there we go. 108 is divisible by 9 because 9 is also divisible by 9. And that works for all numbers divisible by 9. I actually thought about this for quite a while, just confirming that this is the case. And it is the case. Any number, add the digits together. If the resulting number is divisible by 9, then the original number is also divisible by 9. Now, thanks to Minecraft, and specifically Tinker's Construct, the forge, I figured out that if you take any number, add those digits together, and the resulting number is not divisible by 9, all you have to do is figure out what you have to add or subtract from that number to make it divisible by 9 to know how many you have to add or subtract from the original number to make it divisible by 9. So if we have 73, for example, let's do a simple number, 
uh, we add those two numbers together, that equals 10. So 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, to make that the resulting number divisible by 9, we have to subtract 1. And then we subtract 1 from the original number, 73, down to 72. Thus, we have a number that's now divisible by 9, which I guess is an actual fairly quick way of getting the remainders of the divisible by 9. I'm extending this even now in my head. It's crazy. Um, but I figured out how to do all that thanks to Tinker's Construct in Minecraft, because having all the liquid metal, you want it to get into blocks. The blocks are require nine ingots. Everything in the forge is measured in ingots, mostly. Sometimes they're measured in nuggets, sometimes they're measured in millibuckets, but those are other things that you have to worry about in other ways. But for the most part, everything's measured in ingots. So you have to translate all of these ingots that you have, that you could have hundreds of, into blocks. So that way you know you can just keep running the blocks, keep creating the blocks. You don't have to worry about, you know, partially filling up the... What is that thing? I forget what the whatever that thing is that I totally just created on the game. Hmm, whatever. Um, so yeah, so I've fairly recently learned all these tricks for nines, for math relating to nine, thanks to Minecraft. And then I started thinking about it a little bit more, and I realized that Minecraft, vanilla Minecraft, teaches eights, eight, the eights multiplication table. And the reason it does that is because of the... Uh, holy crap, I'm forgetting their names. The, uh, the, 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 uh, furnace. That's the word I was looking for. Because of the furnace, okay, coal, you, you can cook eight things with. So with one piece of coal, you can cook eight pieces of glass or eight pieces of meat. So to cook a stack, you have to have eight coal. Well, all of a sudden, we know what eight times eight is. Because if one coal cooks eight things, then eight coal cooks eight things times eight. Well, we also know that a stack is 64. So eight times eight is 64. So if you extend that and start doing the math, uh, to cook 16 things, you need two coal. So eight times two is 16 and so on and so forth, the whole way up to 64. And then you can also extend that. So if you break everything up into stacks of 64, you can also figure out, you know, what times eight you need to get to six, to whatever number you come up with. And I just realized this, and I need to point this out to my nephew because he's about that age. I think he's learning multiplication tables now. I should point this out to my nephew because once he realizes that the game is doing it, He'll start remembering this stuff more and more, and thus multiplication tables would be that much easier for him. And now I'm thinking, how much else does Minecraft teach math-wise? I mean, there are reasons that a stack is 64 tall. You might think that's a really odd number, but when it comes to computers, that's actually a really simple number. 64 is a multiple or is a power of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So it's 2 to the power of 6. Well, 2 to the power of 6 is just 6 digits in binary. That's why a stack is 64 because it's measured in 6 digits of binary. Same with 16. 16 is also a power of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16. And that's a nibble if i remember my computer term correctly and i'm fairly sure i do in this case uh four digits of binary is a nibble but it can count up to 16. well there you go that's why some stacks are 16 and some stacks are 64 is because that's how binary works 
And I would guess that when Notch originally created them, he wanted a stack, but he didn't want to waste numbers. So if you want to count up to 100, you're wasting numbers in binary because 128 is efficient in binary. Uh, 128 is a multiple or is a power of 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So that's times 7. So 7 digits in binary can count up to 128. But to count to 100, you still need those 7 digits of binary. Because if you lose one, you can only count to 64. So to have 100, you're wasting binary numbers. So that's probably why Notch did 64 is because he didn't want more than 100 in a stack, but he didn't want to waste numbers in binary. And then for some things he wanted less, so he picked 16, which is a nibble. And yeah, there you go. There's some computer math for you. So uh, I just thought that was fascinating. I bet you a lot of other people knew this information already. I just think it's interesting. I hope you guys did too. Minecraft teaches you math.